Hello everyone, this is Vaseem and I welcome you all to this session where I'll be talking about a Python developer resume. So let's take a look at the agenda for this session. So first of all, I will talk about a Python developer in general and then I will talk about the job and salary trends for a Python developer. After this, I will talk about job description of a Python developer and then I will talk about the skills required for both entry level and experienced Python developer. And finally, to sum up this session, I will also give you a sample Python developer resume. I hope you guys are clear with the agenda. Now, without wasting any more time, let's talk about the Python developer. Who exactly is a Python developer? If we go by the textbook definition, a Python developer is responsible for writing server side web development logic. A Python developer usually develop back end components and connect those components to applications with the other web services and support the front end developers by integrating their work with the Python application. But then a Python developer has certain key roles and responsibilities. So let's also take a look at those responsibilities for a Python developer. So the key responsibilities include writing effective, testable and scalable code. So your code has to be top notch when you're working on Python guys and you have to develop backend components to improve the responsiveness and overall performance. I mean, if you're working on any application, there has to be two parts of the application. There is front end and back end also. So you have to develop the backend components very efficiently to improve the response and performance as well. Then you have to integrate user facing elements into applications and then you have to test and debug programs as well. So if you are a Python developer, you must be working on different projects. So you have to test those programs and also debug those programs to improve the efficiency of the code. And then there is the improvement of security and data protection solutions as well. Talking about the other responsibilities, it includes access and prioritize the feature requests. Then you have to coordinate with the internal teams to understand user requirements and provide technical solutions as well. So if you're working on a project, there has to be a certain requirements given to you by the client. So you have to meet those requirements coordinating with your internal teams and whatever. And then there is integration of data storage solutions as well. So you must be working on databases as well. You have to understand how it works. And then there is improving the functionality of existing systems as well. So now that we are done discussing the key responsibilities of a Python developer, let's take a look at a typical job description that we have for a Python developer. It may vary from company to company according to what they need, but a typical job description looks like this. So I'm going to read out the job description for you guys. So it says we are looking for a Python developer to join our engineering team and help us develop and maintain various software products. Then they have given the responsibilities that you're going to handle during this job, which says Python developer responsibilities include writing and testing code, debugging programs and integrating applications with third party web services. And to be successful in this role, you should have experience using server side logic and work well in a team. So this is basically a job description which a company gives you, which actually, you know, handles all the responsibilities that you're going to consider while working on that job. And ultimately, you'll build highly responsive web applications that align with your business needs. And if you're working on any application, there has to be, you know, back end and front end as well. So if you're working on front end, there will be a responsive web design application as well so that you might have to be working on that as well. So let's take a look at another job description. Although it is going to, you know, give you the same context, but we are still going to read it. So it says we are looking for a Python developer responsible for managing the interchange of data between the server and the users. So they have given you what the developer is going to actually do while working on that job. After that, they have given you the primary responsibilities, which says your primary focus will be the development of all server side logic, ensuring high performance and responsiveness to the request from the front end. So all in all, these job descriptions actually handle all those responsibilities that I've told you before. So if you have all those responsibilities, you know, covered beforehand, it's going to help you getting that job very easily. And they've also, you know, mentioned like you will be responsible for integrating the front end elements built by our coworkers into the application. And it also says that it is necessary to have a basic understanding of the front end technologies. So now that we have discussed the job description as well. So this is basically, uh, you know, a typical job description and it may vary from companies to companies. Now we know that business is booming and Python is going pretty strong when it comes to popularity and implementation. Looking at the statistics, we can easily assume that the job market looks very promising for a Python developer. With a sudden increase in the demand of a Python developer, it has led to a lot of job openings in the last five years. I mean, for a junior or entry level Python developers, the graph shows an increase of more than 20% job created in the last five years. 
and in the case of a senior or experienced Python developer, there is an increase of 12% jobs created in the last five years. And if we check for jobs related to Python developer, we will get at least 40 to 50,000 active job openings that we can apply for. But it becomes trickier because to land that job, one has to be precise and on point when talking about the skill set that they possess. I mean, sometimes even the smallest details can do wonders on your CV. And also the available job or the job availability actually differs from places to places. Like if you're searching for a job in Bangalore or, you know, in San Francisco, the job openings can be higher, but in a remote location somewhere else in the country, it may be, you know, lesser than what you expect. Now that we have actually discussed the Python developer job trends, let's move on to the salary trends for a Python developer in 2019. I mean with the amount of demand that this profile has there is a lot of confusion about how much a Python developer actually gets paid. If we talk about a Python developer in the United States, the average salary is about $90,000 a year and the highest can even reach up to $135,000 a year as well. Talking about the salary of a junior or entry level Python developer in India, the average salary is about 500,000 rupees a year. And for a senior Python developer, the average salary goes around 600,000 rupees a year as well. And if we talk about the highest, it may go up to 2 million rupees a year as well, according to your skill set and your experience. Now, with the current job market, it is going to go higher with the latest developments. And since Python is very easy to learn, it has a misconception that getting a job as a Python developer is going to be a piece of cake. I mean, if you're looking at a job as a Python developer, you must master certain skills. And talking about the skills, let's move on to Python developer skills that are actually required to get a job as a Python developer. Also, if you are new to Python programming, don't forget to check out exciting tutorials and full courses on Edureka to become a leader in no time. Now getting back to the topic, let's talk about the skills required for a fresher or entry level Python developer guys. And so I have listed down the required skills. Let's talk about them one by one. So first of all, you should have a hands on Python development experience. You should be able to write effective scalable code and then you must have strong problem solving and reverse engineering skills guys and then you must have expertise in web python frameworks like django flask web 2 pi etc you must be very well aware of the agile methodologies and then you must be aware of the object relational mapper or orm the knowledge of web services and api is a add-on for your skill set guys and you should have a basic understanding of databases and sql as well so if you are working on any project, you have developed the front end and the back end as well. So you must have the understanding of databases. So you should know how you are storing your data and you should know the basic understanding of SQL as well to retrieve and update that data again. And then you should also have a knowledge of TLC scripting. Talking about other skills that you require for a Python developer, there is a strong understanding of DevOps. Then you should have an understanding of full stack development as well. Knowledge on cloud services is an add-on guys and sometimes you will be working on front-end technologies that I have mentioned already for the key roles and responsibilities. So you must have the knowledge of HTML, CSS, JavaScript and jQuery. Now talking about the other skills, you should have excellent debugging skills. So if you are working on any program code, you must be able to understand how it works and you should be able to, you know, amend the errors and remove the ambiguities from it. And last but not least, you should have a basic understanding of software development lifecycle. So you will be able to, you know, actually consider the requirements and accordingly make the project working for the client. So now talking about an experienced individual or a senior Python developer, the skills that I discussed are a must. On top of that, there are a bunch of other skills that are required. So let's talk about them in detail now. So first of all, you should have a solid expertise as a Python developer. And you should have the basic understanding or you should have an experience working with databases and SQL. There should be an experience with JavaScript and Angular frameworks as well. And you should be keen for attention to detail and there has to be certain leadership skills that you require because you will be handling a team of certain people if you are an experienced Python developer. So leadership actually plays a very important role there. And you should have experience working with AWS and REST API as well. And then you should have an experience with frameworks like Django or Flask as well, where you have actually made some applications using those frameworks. And last but not least, you should have a degree in BSc in computer science or engineering or any required relevant field. So these are the skills that are required for any senior Python developer guys. And now that we are done discussing the required skills, let's talk about how we can build a resume for a Python developer. 
So first of all whenever we are making a resume there are two approaches that we can follow So first one is chronological in which we mention the experience as it has taken place Like the first job and the next one and all and the next one is functional in which we mention the experience according to the job profile For example, if there is specifically one skill that is required for a job, but you have worked on it recently You can start with that skill only even though a resume is telling your professional story there are a few points that you have to consider while writing a resume to get better results so let's take a look at a few of them first of all the resume has to be concise and clear in terms of formatting so the recruiter has to be able to identify your skill set easily by looking at just the format of your resume then you have to keep your resume updated as well you cannot just go for a job interview with a not updated resume you have to keep your resume updated at all times then there is one point for experience less than eight years the resume should be a page I mean I have seen people writing three and four pages of resumes for writing their all skill set they have done throughout their professional life but you have to consider this if you have an experience less than eight years the resume should be a page it's not necessary to write two or three or four pages of resume for writing skills that is not going to be highlighted when a recruiter is looking at your resume so if you have experience less than eight years keep it short and into a page only then there is functional resume for an experience of two plus years so if you have less than two plus years experience you can go for chronological approach writing your resume but if your experience is more than two years you should start with functional resume so you have to give priority to the skills that are required for your particular job role and then you have to mention your activities that you are a part of and then you have to write your achievements and hobbies as well so keep a certain part of your resume reserved for your achievements and hobbies so people actually want to know what you have achieved in your professional life and they also want to know what your hobbies are so we have to be very short precise and on point and it must highlight all your skills and necessary details and still look professional guys this is the key to write an effective Python developer resume. So now that we know how we can make a resume for a Python developer, let's also take a look at a sample resume that I've made here. So it starts with the header, which have my full name and current designation and contact information with a photo as well. So if you look at it, it's very concise and you know very professional. So you start with the introduction, which you give very simple and concise. Then you move on to the education, where you give your educational details or qualification that you have done so far. And then you start with experience like if you are a fresher talk about your projects that you have done during college or your graduations and if you are an experienced professional your role in the organization that you have worked on your projects you should mention that in the experience after that you move on to the skills in which you give all the skills that you have acquired throughout this time if you are a fresher just mention everything that you know and if you are an experienced professional take the approach of functional resume and write those skills first which are actually required for this job role and after this you keep a short part of your resume for achievements and hobbies and you can just mention your achievements in your curriculum and non curriculum activities and hobbies that are actually relevant. Now that we have come to the end of the session guys don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and also press the bell icon to get the latest updates from Edureka. Thank you.